Ladies and gentlemen, the battle of two powerhouses. And in this video, we're going to try to answer which is the better helicopter, the EC-135 or the EC-145. You know, as a kid, seeing air ambulances flying around, landing on highways, and then flying to the hospital, saving lives, that was one of the like primary reasons why I wanted to get into aviation. I just really like the idea of saving someone's life and doing it in such a cool way. And now that I am a helicopter pilot, working in the industry when I look around the helicopters in the industry when it comes to air ambulances there's only a few key players you have the Bell 407 and then you pretty much only have the Eurocopters and by far the EC 135 and the EC 145 dominate the helicopter air ambulance market when it comes to other industries like utility stuff and power line stuff the MD 500 is really a big player and the Bell 429 for certain operations when it comes to transportation like the Sequoia Ski S76. When it comes to offshore stuff, uh, the Bell 407. When it comes to like helicopter skiing, the AS350 is really popular. There's certain helicopters that are at the top of their niche for what they do. But when it comes to helicopter air ambulance, the Eurocopter 135 and the 145 are definitely at the top. So to actually break it down, before the 145 and the 135, we have to talk about the EC-130. The EC-130, the Eurocopter 130, actually came from and stemmed from the AS350. AS350, the A-Star. Now the AS350 is an incredibly powerful helicopter. It's like the powerhouse. The reason why is it's got an incredible power to weight ratio. And actually this helicopter flew and landed on top of Mount Everest. So Eurocopter looked at the AS350 and they changed a couple different things about it. The primary biggest change they made to it is they put the Fenestrum tail rotor on it. They also made the body significantly wider. And because of that, it has a much larger cabin volume. The helicopter was closely designed with tour operators and it was marketed to the tourism industry and specifically the EC-130 is extremely popular with Blue Hawaiian helicopters in Hawaii and that's actually who launched the helicopter. They were like the launching operator of the EC-130. And then you've got Papillon and Maverick out in the Grand Canyon who use this helicopter. And you can tell this was designed for tourism. It's got those really big windows. It has four seats across the back and three seats in the front. It kind of looks like a bench seat in like an old Ford F-150 or something. But this helicopter was designed for people to sit and see out. And you're gonna notice a theme throughout this video that the Eurocopters, they just have a massive interior volume and that's gonna become really important. And I wanna make a note here because it's really important and some people in the comments are gonna have a problem with it. But Eurocopter was bought by Airbus in 2014. After the acquisition, all of the helicopters were rebranded into the H-130, the H-135, and the H-145. But I very rarely hear them called the H-135 the H-135 and so on. People just call them the Eurocopter. And for sake of not confusing anyone, I will continue to call them the Eurocopters as well. But they are technically the H-130, the H-135, and the H-145. The 135 entered service in 1996, and as of 2020, 1,400 of these units have been sold. So the original design of the 135 came from German aerospace company MBB, but it was later branded as the EC-135. So the interesting thing about this helicopter is it is a twin engine helicopter and the operator actually has a choice of which engine style they want to put in it. They can either put in a Turbo Mecha Aris 2B engine or they can put in two Pratt & Whitney PW206B engines. And depending on which engine type the operator chooses, it changes the name of the helicopter. So you could have the EC-135T or the EC-135P, but either way, it is a four-bladed hingeless rotor system that is rigidly attached to the hub, and it has that Fenstrom tail rotor. And let's talk about the 145 real quick, and then we're actually gonna compare them. So the EC-145 is based off the MBB BK-117 C1 helicopter. And so rather than coming up with a whole new design, Eurocopter took the front end of the EC-135 and the back end of the BK-117 and combined it into one helicopter. The 145 is also a dual engine helicopter. It is powered by two Turbo Mecha Aerial 2E engines. So one thing to note before we compare them is the 145 has that same four bladed rotor system, but in a later version, the 145 Delta Echo, that comes with five blades. All right, let's run through the numbers. The 135 is 11 feet, six inches tall. The 145 is 11 feet, 
four inches tall. This next one makes a really big difference. The 135 is 33 feet, six inches long. The 145 is 42 feet, nine inches long. I mean, that's nearly nine feet longer. We'll talk about why that is so important. The 135 has an empty weight of 3,208 pounds. The 145 has an empty weight of 3,951 pounds. The 135 has a maximum takeoff weight of 6,415 pounds and the 145 has a maximum takeoff weight of 8,157 pounds. So we can carry significantly more weight on the 145 than the 135, which is really important. The never exceed speed of the 135 is 155 knots at maximum takeoff weight. The never exceed speed of the 145 is 145 knots at max takeoff weight. So it can't go as fast. The EC135 has a range of 343 nautical miles and the 145 has a range of 370 nautical miles. Now, according to the numbers I found, and it is so difficult and tricky to find the actual price of helicopters because everything changes from country to country with different options, um, and they've been out for decades, so the numbers always change, but the 135 costs about $5.7 million new, and the 145 costs about $8.7 million new. The 135 can be configured for either single or dual pilot, and it can perform both VFR and IFR operations. And the 145 can also be single or dual pilot, and it can also perform VFR or IFR operations. But here is by far the biggest difference and the most important difference between them. Just for reference, the Bell 407 has an interior volume of 87 cubic feet. The EC-135 Tango 3 has an interior volume of 100 cubic feet. And the EC-145 has an interior volume of 143 cubic feet. 100 cubic feet versus 143 cubic feet is a massive size difference. And the way we could really tell that is by that extra nine feet that they add on the back. And the reason this is so important is because in 2016, over half of all of the EC-135s that were operational were operating in the emergency medical service category. And I am not an emergency medicine provider, not a nurse, not a doctor, not a paramedic, but you can check out the interview I did with uh, Jen on the Chopper Talk podcast right here. She is a flight paramedic and a flight nurse who works in the back of all these helicopters. She works in the 407, the 135, and the 145. And in that interview, she talks about how important that much that extra space is. There's just so much more space to work with the patient, bring extra equipment, operate, move around, and not be breathing on each other. It makes it feel like you just have a little bit more space to work. So even though they both have similar rotor systems, similar designs, um, they both have the Fenstrom tail rotor, they look very similar. The only thing is the 145 is much longer and it has a much larger interior volume. You know, the 145 can't fly as fast as the 135, but it can lift a little bit more. But all that doesn't really matter. The biggest thing is just that internal space. So let's look at who operates the 135 and who operates the 145. If you're watching this and you are not inside of America, I am sorry because I tailored all these to pretty much just American operators of this helicopter, but these helicopters are very popular all across the globe. So the 135 is operated by the Broward County Sheriff's Office, the Massachusetts State Police, NASA has a couple of them, and Air Methods, and the Royal Australian Navy, among many, many, many others. And a couple operators of the 145 are Air Methods again, the Texas Department of Public Safety, Boston MedFlight, and many others. And Air Methods is the largest helicopter air ambulance company, and they operate all kinds of stuff from the AS350, the Bell 407, uh, the EC-135, and the EC-145. But just from what I've seen around my local area, Air Methods really is using the Eurocopter brand. And so when it comes to answering the question, which is the better helicopter, I have to give it to the 145, just in terms of what it can do. Specifically, the capabilities it provides in the event that you need that space, whether it's to bring extra medical equipment 
or medical staff, or whether it's to transport more patients. Having that extra space is valuable when you were already dealing with a very small environment. Now sure, there are plenty of details that I did not mention in this video, but when you're talking about more than 50% of these helicopters being used in the emergency medicine category, having that space is important, having a longer cruise distance, being able to carry more weight, those things are really crucial. So I just broke it down for you. If you enjoyed that video, let me know down in the comments below by leaving the word air ambulance. This is one of the biggest reasons why all of us helicopter pods get into the helicopter industry. It's just so cool to save lives and do it in a fun sporty cool way and if you found yourself enjoying this video i would really appreciate it if you liked it it means the world to me subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys on the next one take care